Pepsi-Cola, P-E-P-S-I. That's your smartest cola buy. Pepsi-Cola presents Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Harding, Counter Spy, calling Washington. Tonight, the case of the Mile High Murders, a thrilling counter-spy report to the American people, brought to you each Tuesday and Thursday by delicious Pepsi-Cola. And now, another report to the American people. In your family's interest, listen to these findings, recently released by the United States Testing Company, Incorporated. After thorough and impartial tests, Pepsi-Cola proved of highest purity. Pepsi-Cola has more quick food energy and value, ounce for ounce, than any other leading nationally known cola. Yes, tested, compared against all other leading nationally known cola drinks, Pepsi-Cola won out. You get the best, and twice as much, in delicious Pepsi-Cola. And now, to Counter Spy. Five, Havana, calling Easy, George, Abel, Nan. M5, Havana, calling Easy, George, Abel, Nan. This is Easy, George, Abel, Nan. Come in, M5. Come in. Important emergency instructions. Repeat emergency. I'm sending boat out to rendezvous point 17, William Richard, which you will pass over in a few minutes. At point 17, William Richard, you will bail out of plane. M5, what about the merchandise? Disregard merchandise. Now, look, M5, I can't do a thing like that. After all, the cargo... Cargo must be sacrificed to preserve safety of all concerned. But maybe we can work it out another way. I don't want to have anything to do with... This is in order. And final. Switch to automatic pilot for gradual dive and bail out. Did you hear me, Easy George? Switching to automatic pilot for gradual dive. That's better. We'll bail out, M5. This is Easy George Abel Nan signing off. Quiet down. Quiet down. I've got bad news for you. I can't smuggle you into the States. Now, you do just as I say, or I'll have to use this gun. All eight of you, move back in the ship. Back toward the tail. That's it, right there. Now, stay right there until I pull this lever. Parachuting out the bomb bay. Please, please, have mercy. Sorry, honest, but I can't help you. We do not have to be afraid to die, my friends. But if we were as wicked as these men, we should be afraid to leave. I said I was sorry. That's all I can say. He shot out of the plane. We will be killed. We will all die. We must pray. Please pray. Ave Maria, gracia plena. Dominia secum. Benedictus tuim. Keep those birds of yours quiet, especially that stinking vulture. Since you returned to Cuba from your aborted mission, you've not been yourself, Egan. Those birds screeching that way make me think of those poor refugees in a plane, pleading for their lives. Rosa. Si, 
there ain't any. Give me another drink. See, si, senor. And hurry up, you fat sow. Egan is anxious to drown his conscience in my best wine. Uh, it's easy for you to talk, Gregor, sitting here in your patio and listening to your crazy birds. You didn't have to dump eight helpless people into the ocean. Sure, you can sleep at night. Here is your drink, senor Egan. Oh, thanks, Rosa. Egan, in our business, sometimes drastic steps are necessary for self-preservation. Talk is cheap. You didn't see their faces. Perhaps, but I see the logic in disposing of them. If you had landed at the field in Florida with that shipment of aliens, you would have been picked up by the police. Would you have preferred that? Of course you would. All right, all right. But how did the police know about the trip? Someone dropped the hint to them. Tell him, Ross. At El Montero Cafe, I was told the flight was spotty. Was anything said about me, Rosa? No, senor. By the way, Egan. Yes? Rosa also heard something else at the Montero Cafe. Something about you. Rosa. I heard, Senor Egan, that when you had delivered some of Senor Gregor's clients safely to the United States, you took money from them. Blackmail money. The... That's a rotten lie. Of course, it's only a rumor. I don't care what it is, it's still a lie. It had better be, Egan. For your sake. You can't frighten me, Gregor, because I've got nothing to hide. I've always been on the up and up with you. Very well, Egan. Now, let's get back to business. We will continue our weekly passenger run from Cuba to Florida. How can we? The cops are on to us. We will no longer use a large plane. Temporarily, we will reduce our activities by using the small five-passenger plane. And from now on, you will land... You will not land at our isolated field in Florida. Instead, we will avail ourselves of desolate stretches of beach along the coast. Nothing's going to stand in the way of your making a fortune. Not even my neck, huh, Gregor? Nothing, Egan. And least of all, your neck. <laughs> Operator, this is Captain Kincaid of the Miami Office Immigration Service. I want to put in a person-to-person -person call to Mr. David Harding, chief of the counter spies in Washington. Hello, Captain Kane. Kincaid, this is Harding. Oh, Mr. Harding, on that matter we discussed last week when I was in Washington, an emergency has arisen. We'd appreciate having counter spy cooperation in this case now. Anything at all, Captain. Can you assign one of your Miami agents? Better than that, Captain. I'm going to give this case my personal supervision. My assistant, Harry Peters, and I will leave immediately for Miami by jet plane. Go ahead, Captain Kincaid. Well, Mr. Harding, this is the obsolete light army bomber I had flown over here to the Miami City Airport to illustrate my theory. Peters and I are very anxious to hear it. Please continue. Now, this is the way I reconstruct the story. A surplus army bomber, identical with this one, left from an improvised runway outside Havana, Cuba, last Friday, with eight aliens aboard. That we're fairly sure of through a contact in Havana. But the plane never landed here in the States. No, Mr. Peters. We had it under spotter observation in the Caribbean and suddenly lost it. And it didn't return to its Cuban base, either. What about the aliens? I was just getting to that, Mr. Harding. All right, Bob. Mr. Harding, my theory is the bomb bay doors were opened like that. And the aliens were forced to jump to their deaths in the Caribbean, thousands of feet below. Mass murder. Chief, this is about the lowest crime we've ever come across. The absolute lowest. Well, Kincaid, I suppose the smugglers must have been tipped off that their plane was spotted and warned the pilot maybe by radio, huh? I figure it the same way, Mr. Harding. It could be, Chief, that the pilot bailed out and was picked up while the aliens went down with the plane. If that's possible, Peters. That'd account for the disappearance of the plane. Anyway, let's get started. Havana, our next stop, Chief. Havana next, Peters. With the cooperation of the Cuban police, we're starting on this alien smuggling racket by smuggling ourselves into Havana by speedboat. <laughs> Yes? Senor Gregor, 
I'm coming to your house. I have something very interesting for you. What is it, Rosa? A letter, senor, from people in the United States to people here in Havana. What I told you about Senor Egan is no longer a rumor. There's the pier ahead, Mr. Harding. Let's see with these glasses on. Thank you, Peter. Yeah, that looks isolated enough for our purposes. It's a good idea, Dave, taking this speedboat instead of a plane. The smugglers probably have their eyes on every airfield in Cuba. Yes, there's no doubt about that, Peter. They have a terrific investment to protect. We know there are thousands of aliens in Cuba, poor devils waiting for the chance to get into the United States. Those who can't get in under the legal quota are willing to pay their last cent to be smuggled in. Nice game. Traffic and human misery. Dave, have you lined out a modus operandi for us? Yes. Now, once we're smuggled in, we'll try to get ourselves smuggled out again. Smuggled out? Dave, they'll, they'll know that we're not aliens. They'll never catch on to you, Peter. Uh-oh. Here I go again. Huh? You're still my star actor, Peter. <laughs> okay, let's have it. Well, by the time we get to Havana, you're going to look and talk like an alien. An alien willing to pay any price to get refuge in the United States. Senor Gregor. The letter, Rosa. See, the letter. You're anxious to see it, no? Where is it? Senor Gregor, you are a man of business. Rosa is a woman of business. She is not beautiful. She is not young and thin. So there is nothing left in life for poor Rosa. But money. Rosa, you've always reminded me of my pet vulture here. The most disgusting. Of creatures. <laughs> you pay me a compliment, Senor Gregor. She is a cunning bird, also, eh, Senor? All right. How much for the letter? Two hundred dollars. The longer I know you, the more repulsive you become. And the more valuable, eh, Senor? <laughs> Two hundred dollars, please. Yes. Yeah. Right. Here it is. Yeah. Pilot made us give him our last dollars when we landed in the United States. We had to do it because if we didn't, he said he would report us to the American government. You are being cheated, Senor Gregor. You stupid sow. You think only the money worries me? Let us like this cause trouble. Talk gets around. Egan has put my entire business in grave danger. My knife. Senor, for a hundred dollars, I could uh, use it where... I don't need you for this. Do not worry, Rosa. When the time comes, I will put an end to Egan personally. You see this dish of raw meat? Come with me over to the pool and you will understand quite clearly. The pool? My fish pond. But you do not feed fish beef like this. Rosa, my fish, you do feed beef like this. Those creatures you see swimming in my pond are piranha fish, a very unusual species from Brazil. Watch what happens when I throw the beef into the water. Now watch. Like wolves, they make attack. They say, Rosa, that a small school of piranha fish can strip a human body of flesh in four minutes. <laughs> An amusing thought, eh, Rosa? Very amusing. Observe. The fish seem to be still hungry. See them skimming the surface? Perhaps they should have bigger bait. Huh? What do you think, Rosa? Huh? <laughs> Back to Counter Spy, presented by delicious Pepsi Cola. Pepsi Cola, it's a spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. Twice as much and better, too. Yes, twice as much and better, too. 
You know Pepsi gives you twice as much. You know Pepsi's better, tastes better. But now I want to make sure you know which cola drink is of proven highest quality. Listen. Impartial tests were made comparing all the leading nationally known colas. And here's the news. Delicious Pepsi was rated tops for quick food energy and honest-to-goodness value, ounce for ounce. Yes, more value and quick food energy in every tasty sip of Pepsi. That's why Pepsi is so refreshing. Why you feel so good. Why you're on the beat. Why people call Pepsi their favorite treat. When the quality's prove tops and the taste is so delightful, so refreshing that you bubble and the quantity is double, say, is it any wonder Pepsi's America's big, big favorite? Insist on tasty Pepsi wherever you may be. At the fountain, say, Pepsi, please. At the stand, say, Pepsi, please. And at the store, get Pepsi in the money-saving carton of six big bottles. How about getting a carton tonight of delicious Pepsi-Cola? Delicious Pepsi-Cola. Delicious Pepsi-Cola. Delicious Pepsi-Cola. Delicious Pepsi-Cola. Now back to Counter Spy. I beg your pardon, sir. Yeah? Please. A light uh, for my pipe. Light? Oh, certainly. Here you are. All clear, Mr. Harding? All clear, Peters. No one in this section of the park. We can talk right here. How did you make out as Mr. Kovac? Passed my first test with flying colors, Dave. I registered at the hotel patronized by refugees. I managed to make friends pretty quickly. Any leads? One of my new friends advised me that I might get what I wanted if I paid a visit to El Montero Cafe. El Montero Cafe, huh? A small native bar room on Del Caro Street. The place is run by a fat, middle-aged woman named Rosa. My friend also said that a visit to Rosa is the first step in making entry into the States. Rosa must be the contact between the aliens and the smugglers. Looks that way, Dave. All right, Peters, or rather, Mr. Kovac, I guess it's time for you to visit this Rosa at El Montero Cafe. See how you make out in your second test. And what do you want with me, Senor Kovac? I have come to you for help, Rosa. Help? I wish passage to the United States. To get to the United States, Senor Kovac, one has only to obtain passage on plane or boat. <laughs> Why come to me? I was told by friends that you could advise me of the steps necessary to get into the United States without detection by the authorities. Senor, the chain means that entry is dangerous, illegal, and they say expensive. I have $25,000. $25,000. It would be a shame that a gentleman so anxious as you should not get what he wishes. Where are you staying in Cuba, Senor Cuba? The Hotel Paloma. Be in your hotel room at 10 tomorrow morning. And an American named Egan will call on you and explain the arrangements. Well, thank you, Rosa. Thank you. You have no idea how much this means to me. Then you passed your second test with flying colors, too, huh, Peters? I guess I did, Dave. And your idea of mentioning $25,000 didn't do any harm. Did you manage to get a line on Egan after I called you earlier? According to the Cuban police, Egan runs a small passenger plane service between Havana and Miami. Mm -hmm. Probably a cover-up for smuggling activities. Well, anyway, Chief, we'll be able to put an end to Egan's business tomorrow morning. Oh, Peters, I'm not just interested in Egan and Rosa. It's obvious we can pick them up any time. No, there's somebody else, somebody who's masterminding this operation. I guess you're right, Dave, but how to get to him? Well, I'd say that's up to you and how well you do on your third test, Mr. Kovac. Yes? Senor Gregor, this is Rosa. What is it, Rosa? I have been looking all over for Egan. He is nowhere to be found. Egan is I... here with me, waiting for me out in the patio. 
I was just about to introduce him to my amusing piranha fish. But you will need Egan to fly the plane. I've made arrangements for another pilot. He will be here next week. But I have for you a client who wishes a trip to the United States now. The client will wait, Rosa. But he is willing to pay $25,000. Oh? Well, Rosa, that is a different matter. This fortunate you did not call me a few minutes late. I made arrangements with the client for Egan to be at his hotel tomorrow morning at 10. Very well, Rosa. Egan will be there. <laughs> I will apologize to my piranha fish for the postponement. <laughs> There'll be no postponement, Mr. Egan. Don't you worry about that, Kovac. You show up tonight in the back room at El Montero Cafe with the 25000 And by this time tomorrow, you'll be safe and snug in the USA. United States of America. I can hardly wait. Mr. Egan, I'm so grateful to you for... Oh, oh uh, excuse me, please. Hello? Senor Kovac, this is Rosa. Is Senor Egan there? Oh, yes, yes, he is. Uh, Senor Egan, it is Rosa. She wishes to speak with you. Okay, thanks. Yeah, Rosa? There is trouble. Do not betray yourself with words or looks. Sure, Rosa. Go ahead. A friend was just here in El Montero and told me about Senor Kovac. This morning at the hotel, there he saw the man who visited Kovac. The visitor was David Harding of the United States Counter Spies. What? Uh, thanks for telling me, Rosa. Thanks very much. You seem troubled, Mr. Egan. Did Rosa have bad news? Not exactly, Kovac. Coming like it did now, in a way, it was good news. Then everything will go as we arranged it. Well, there'll be just one change. <laughs> my arm! My arm! Oh, you're trying to get out of this grip! The more it's gonna hurt! I do not understand. Why are you doing this to me? I'll explain just as soon as I get this gun out of your shoulder holster. All right, now. Get back. Up against that wall. What is the meaning of this? You can drop the act. Rosa phoned to tell me about some information she got on your visitor here this morning. Harding of the counter spies. What do you got to say for yourself now? Just one thing, Egan. If you're smart, you'll drop that gun and give yourself up. You think I'm crazy, Kovac? Just to set you straight, the name is Peters. A counter spy, too. That's right, Egan. So you want me to give myself over to you, that it? It might go easier on you. If you do get away now, Egan, I'll get you anyway. I'll hound you till I get you. That's where you're wrong, Peters. Your hounding days are over. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> but you're not. You fool, Egan. Murdering a counter spy, you stupid, idiotic fool. What did you expect me to do, Gregor? Let him take me in. This will ruin everything. So I'll lay low where they won't find Don't me. Don't you realize now the counter spies will find you wherever you go? They won't rest until you're captured. I thought you were so smart, Gregor. I thought you had a way of handling everything. Of course. There is a way of handling this. Now that you're here, I have nothing to worry about. What? What's the idea of that gun? The idea, Egan, is self-preservation. If you were ever captured, you would blurt out my part in the smuggling business. No. No, Gregor. You can trust me. I had intended to rid myself of you last night. You were saved by the fat, disgusting swine, Rosa. Now I'll take up where I left off. Gregor, please. Wait. D don't, don't you. I'm not going to shoot, Egan. Huh? I'm just taking you to the edge of the pool over there. Then I'll leave it to my piranha fish to destroy all evidence of your being. Now, Egan, you will commence walking to the... Buenos dias, Senor Egan. Rosa, you... You threw that knife into Gregor. See. Si. But why? You were on his side. Perhaps you do not understand how a woman feels to be talked to the way Senor Gregor always talked to me. I am not so young... Nor am I so beautiful. I am not so fat. 
so disgusting as he said. <laughs> I have been waiting for such an opportunity as this to answer Senor Gregor. Hey, he's still alive. See, si, oh. I meant it so. I aimed my knife so that he should not die so easily, so painless. I'll get a gun and finish him off. Wait. Do not fire that gun. But I have to... I have to... planned for him the death he planned for you. We will feed him to his cannibal fish, Senor Egan. In the pond? Now, look, Rosa, I can't... I have saved your life. You will do as I wish, no? Okay, okay. Guess I owe it to you. You can drag him across the patio by the feet. Yeah. <laughs> Even a woman such as I has feelings. He should not have talked to me that way. Stop where you are. Uh, what? Don't move. Keep him covered, Peters. Got him, Mr. Harding. Peters? No. Senor Kovac, you're alive. Sorry to disappoint you two. It can't be. I fired two shots into you. Those were blanks in Peters' gun, Egan. They were in there waiting for you to use them. Senor Egan, it is a trick. That's right, Rosa. It was a member of the Cuban secret police who informed you that I'd visited Kovac's room. We wanted you to tip off Egan so he would lead us to the head smuggler. And here we are, thanks to those blanks. Okay, but the slugs in this gun aren't blanks. Drop that gun, Egan. You don't have a chance. I got nothing to lose by making a try. Stop, Egan. All right, Peters, let him have it. Peter's that end. Yes, Chief. Nobody can live with those piranha fish. You can call the Cuban police now. Tell them to come out for Rosa and Gregor. Then we'll fly back home. <laughs> Delicious Pepsi-Cola. Bring it on now. Enjoy that bubbling, tangy, tasty treat. Sure hits the spot. At parties, it's a wonderful idea to serve delicious Pepsi. That extra quick food energy gives folks that bounce, that zing. And Pepsi's big 12-ounce bottles go twice as far. You get a carton of six bottles, and you serve 12 full-size drinks. So save that money. Get the best, and get twice as much. In delicious Pepsi-Cola. Pepsi-Cola hits the spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. Twice as much and better, too. Pepsi-Cola, here's the drink for you. That's it, delicious Pepsi-Cola. Tune in every Tuesday and Thursday, same time, same station, to Counter Spy. Listen on Thursday for the exciting Case of the Hoodlum's Hero... On Counter Spy. Tonight's Counter Spy program originated in New York, was directed by Leonard L. Bass, dramatized by Edward Adamson, and featured Don McLaughlin and Mandel Kramer, with music by Jesse Crawford. This is Jay Jackson speaking. Counter Spy is a Phillips H. Lord production for Pepsi Cola. Enjoy some delicious Pepsi tonight.